in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. All war is based on deception. Victory comes from finding opportunities in problems. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Opportunities multiply as they are seized. The greatest victory is that which requires no battle. The wise warrior avoids the battle. The art of war is of vital importance to the state. In war, the way is to avoid what is strong and to strike at what is weak. The good fighters of old put themselves beyond the possibility of defeat and then waited for an opportunity of defeating the enemy. The greatest general is not the one who wins the battles, but the one who avoids them. The victorious strategist only seeks battle after the victory has been won, whereas he who is destined to defeat first fights and afterwards looks for victory. The art of war is to know when to fight and when not to fight. Victory is reserved for those who are willing to pay its price. There is an intelligent way to eat a frog. I just don't know what it is. Great results can be achieved with small forces. Those who are victorious plan effectively and change decisively. They are like a great river that maintains its course but adjusts its flow. A leader leads by example not by force. One need not destroy one's enemy, one need only destroy his willingness to engage. In warfare there are no constant conditions. He who can modify his tactics in relation to his opponent will succeed and win. Correct your mistake as soon as you have found it. Opportunities increase as they are taken. Plan for what is difficult while it is easy. Do what is great while it is small. Sweat more during peace. Bleed less during war. Kill one, terrify a thousand. He who wishes to fight must first count the cost. If it is to your advantage, make a forward move. If not, stay where you are. Don't flail against the world, use it. Flexibility is the operative principle in the art of war. If you fight with all your might, there is a chance of life whereas death is certain if you cling to your corner. He who wins knows when to fight and when not to fight. He will win whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all its ranks. Who does not know the evils of war cannot appreciate its benefits. There are not more than five musical notes, yet the combinations of these five give rise to more melodies than can ever be heard. It is the business of a general to be serene and inscrutable, impartial and self-controlled. Engage people with what they expect. It is what they are able to discern and confirms their projections. 
It settles them into predictable patterns of response, occupying their minds while you wait for the extraordinary moment, that which they cannot anticipate. Ponder and deliberate before you make a move. If the enemy leaves the door open, you must rush in. So the principles of warfare are, do not depend on the enemy not coming, but depend on your readiness against him. Do not depend on the enemy not attacking, but depend on our position that cannot be attacked. If the mind is willing, the flesh can go on and on without many things. The general who advances without coveting fame and retreats without fearing disgrace, whose only thought is to protect his country and do good service for his sovereign, is the jewel of the kingdom. When torrential water tosses boulders, it is because of its momentum. When the strike of a hawk breaks the body of its prey, it is because of timing. Unless you enter the tiger's lair, you cannot get hold of the tiger's cubs. Management of many is the same as management of few. It is a matter of organization. No ruler should put troops into the field merely to gratify his own spleen. No general should fight a battle simply out of pique. In war, numbers alone confer no advantage. Do not advance relying on sheer military power. Weigh the situation, then move. Rewards for good service should not be deferred a single day. Prohibit the taking of omens and do away with superstitious doubts. Then, until death itself comes, no calamity need be feared. The opportunity to secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands. There are roads which must not be followed, armies which must not be attacked, towns which must not be besieged, positions which must not be contested, commands of the sovereign which must not be obeyed. The value of time, that is, of being a little head of your opponent, often provides greater advantage than superior numbers or greater resources. Confront them with annihilation, and they will then survive. Plunge them into a deadly situation, and they will then live. When people fall into danger, they are then able to strive for victory. The skillful leader subdues the enemy's troops without any fighting. He captures their city without laying siege to them. He overthrows their kingdom without lengthy operations in the field. When the leader is morally weak and his discipline not strict, when his instructions and guidance are not enlightened, when there are no consistent rules, neighboring rulers will take advantage of this. A sovereign of high character and intelligence must be able to know the right man should place the responsibility on him and expect results. <laughs>